Hello and welcome back. My name is Sean, also known as Chili Chump, and I love all things to do with chilies. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about vacuum seal fermentation. And in particular, a vacuum seal fermentation method that doesn't require a vacuum sealer. Let's go and pick some chilies first, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how this method works. Here are our gorgeous chilies. We have some filler chilies. These are poblanos. We've got about six or seven of them. These are gonna add some sugars to help the lactobacillus do their job, as well as a little bit of sweetness and also bulk the sauce out a bit for us. These other chilies are maruga scorpions, which are ridiculously hot. And uh, yeah, these are gonna, these are gonna hurt. When doing a traditional vacuum seal fermentation, you'd be using one of these, which is a vacuum sealer. The only thing you need to really pay attention to is that it has a moist function or wet function because when you're doing the vacuum sealing you don't want the liquids from the chilies to be pulled up into the suction system. This is actually a new one I had to buy because the one that I was using previously broke when we moved and uh, this one's been doing a good job. Pretty happy with it. I'll leave a link down below if you do actually want to buy a vacuum sealer. Instead of a vacuum sealer we are going to be using a Ziploc bag or a freezer bag or whatever you call it where you live, but basically these things here that have this Ziploc at the top. Now this one here is a double Ziploc, uh, that works great, but you don't have to have that. Just make sure that you have a good quality bag because you don't want this thing leaking. If you want to test that this bag is gonna do the job for your fermentation, then fill it up with water, make it really full, seal it up, and then just give it a bit of a, squeeze and play with it and just make sure that it doesn't split at the seams. Some of the cheaper bags, the thinner plastic will do that and that's not ideal. Doing a vacuum seal fermentation, one of the big benefits is the fact that you are pulling out all the oxygen from the bag and uh, we'll be doing exactly the same thing with this method and that actually helps out because you can use a lower percentage of salt. I use 2% salt whenever I'm doing a vacuum seal method. Now this method is basically a mash fermentation and uh, that means we're going to be measuring all the ingredients, whatever else you're going to put in here. We're keeping this one simple, just salt and chilies and we'll add whatever ingredients we want right at the end. This here is 489 grams. So 2% of a kilogram would be 20 grams of salt. So 489, that's close as damn it to 500 grams. So we'll make that 10 grams of salt and that will be just over 2%. Don't forget to keep everything sanitized and sterilized even with the vacuum seal method because you uh, don't want all these gorgeous chilies to go to waste by having something that's not sanitary. Now, this part is really up to you. Uh, I would hope that when you buy these new from the store, when they're coming out this box, that they are gonna be sanitary because they are used for food. But if you are a little concerned, if you have been opening it and closing it and you might have got something in there, like my hand, <laughs> then you can give it a bit of a spritz with star sand. And again, this is just phosphoric acid. The amount that's in there is minuscule. So really is not a concern. If you'd rather not do that, that's fine as well. You'll probably be just perfectly fine. I just don't like wasting my beautiful produce. Make sure that you use bags that are far bigger than you think you need. These are uh, medium Baco foil safe locks. So the medium will be perfectly fine for half kilogram batches. There's two ways to do this. Uh, I'll show you the way I prefer. For both methods, you're gonna need to do this. Just zip it all the way right to the end where you've got a little bit of a gap there to let air out. And then you can just push this through and get as much of the air out and then seal that end bit. That'll work and most of the time you'll be perfectly fine, but an even better way is to use a bowl of water. So this is probably not the ideal size bowl, <laughs> but it's what I had at hand. So we're gonna put this in here and uh, we're gonna start pushing down and we'll see that the air, we're gonna start working those out. You can see there's some bubbles down there. 
just remember where your hole is because you don't want water getting in here. But we're going to be doing this. And uh, try and show the camera. Uh, we're going to just do this. Keep pulling the bag underwater. And we'll get those bubbles to rise up to the top corner. And put it down just below where that is. And right at the end, just zip it up. The little bit of bubbles that are in here with a little bit of oxygen, that's not too much of a problem. You're not going to be able to get it all out. Uh, you can do your best, just you know, keep it submerged in the water for a while, keep working those bubbles. But with a little bit of air that's in here, you can see there's a few little bubbles, nothing too hectic. This will be perfectly safe. This will start producing CO2 very quickly. Uh, let me bring out one of my other vacuum seal fermentations so you know what to expect because you want to get this stuff all down into the base. And when you put this into your fermenting space, uh, I have a fermentation fridge which maintains the temperatures I need. So I'll be putting in there. Make sure that it is upright like this because when this starts expanding with air, let me show you another one that I have. So here's a vacuum seal fermentation I've been doing. This was completely vacuum sealed. And you can see that it has lots of CO2 in there. And it's a perfectly healthy fermentation. It's doing really well. I'll be doing a video on this very soon as well. Uh, it's actually a couple of videos that I'll be doing about this one. But you can see that it does create this air. So if you are going to be doing this method, make sure that you leave this gap up here. There is actually a benefit of having this system rather than that one is when it blows up too much. This one here still has some air space. So it can still produce some more CO2 without this bag going like hard, like no more space left for it to blow up. When it does get to that point, all you need to do is snip the top here, uh, let out some of the air or the CO2, and then seal it up again Put it back in your fermentation space with this it's even simpler once this blows up too much then just pop a little bit of the ziplock push out some of the air while you're releasing the air seal it up again and let it carry on fermenting there you have it a nice quick method to make a vacuum seal fermentation without a vacuum sealer I'm going to go and stick this inside my ferminator get this fermenting and I'm going to be doing a nice little experimental batch with this one I hope that your season has gone fantastically and you're making tons of hot sauce. Let me know in the comments below what's your favorite hot sauce that you're making this year. I uh, always love reading your comments. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Until then, stay spicy.